faz 178 anos. Uh, ele escolheu para fazer o, o olho esquerdo, uh, uma catarata nuclear, uh, três cruzes, uh, com uma subcapsular, uma cruz. Uh, então foi escolhida a lente uh, para a cirurgia para fazer a catarata do olho esquerdo. Próximo slide. Uh, ambos os olhos têm a contagem do hotelial adequada, do, mais de 2.100 células. Uh, aqui a gente fez também a parte do OPD e então mostra a, a berrometria uh, total, uh, córnea e cristalino. Próximo slide. Uh, o astigmatismo, a córnea é um pouco irregular, mas um, o astigmatismo é bem baixo, próximo. Uh, vocês conseguem ver aqui na topografia também com, com plácido. Uh, a parte da biometria, então, uh, foi escolhida uma lente 23,5, uh, tanto na Higgs como na Holiday. E a gente foi para a Barrett e ela pediu uma lente... Uh, tórica com incisão a 135, só que como ele uh, preferiu fazer a 180, a incisão, então uh, deu uma lente não tórica uh, anulando o astigmatismo. Então vocês vão ver que ele vai botar a uh, lente não tórica, é porque uh, com a mudança da incisão, uh, ele, uh, a calculadora pediu uh, não tórica, tá? então a gente foi uma mudança em cima da hora. É, a gente achou que ele, tinha, que ele ia fazer a incisão a 135, mas é 180. Então vocês vão ver que ele vai fazer uh, a cirurgia temporal. Uh, então, boa cirurgia para o Dr. Akaoshi. Now, this is an, uh, 78 years already uh, with uh, hyperopic refraction. Uh, there are grade 3 nucleus. So in this case, I'm planning to implant uh, the uh, panoptics. Uh, the nucleus is a fairly dense. Uh, I implant, uh, I use a uh, counter traction, counter pitch up technique. Uh, this is a marker, is a 5.5 on the corner. This is an uh, instrument I designed recently for ASICO. This is a capsule rexis forceps. At the end, there's a uh, marker. So uh, you can make an uh, ideal size of the capsule rexis with this mark. Especially for the multifocal lens, uh, the size and the position of the uh, Lexis is very important. So I always use a marker before starting the surgery. When the cornea is dry, you can clearly see the mark. But when the cornea is wet, the mark will disappear. This is a diamond blade. I made a main, main incision. And the side port incision is very small, 0.6. This is an uh, intracameral anesthesia, 0.5% lidocaine, preservative free. You may feel some burning sensation just for a moment, please don't worry. I'll check the incision size to 1.8. Goes in 1.9, 2 doesn't go in. 1.9 goes in. So the this incision size is 1.9. Now the I fill up the chamber with only with viscoat. With the Utrata capsule rexis forceps, I'll make a capsule rexis according to this uh, guide of the rexis. So you can clearly see the mark on the cornea, but once the cornea is wet, wet this mark will disappear. So the, uh, during the surgery, the visibility of the anterior chamber will not be hindered. Then uh, I use uh, the uh, 27 gauge special hydrodissection cannula. The tip is bent and it's tapered. The cannula is introduced horizontally under the capsule rexis edge, rotate 90 degrees, and a small amount of BSS 
is quickly injected, and the certain that the nucleus can rotate freely in the capsular back. The nucleus should rotate freely in this uh, point. The small point uh, trick is to use a small syringe. If you use in a big syringe, the uh, hydro dissection will not successfully perform. After the hydro dissection, you can inject some more viscose to clear the nuclear surface. And for the denser cataract, I'd use a counter pre-chop technique. This is a uh, <coughs> pre-chopper for the dense cataract, universal pre-chopper. I have only two pre-choppers. One is combo pre-chopper for the soft cataract, and the other one is a universal pre-chopper for denser nucleus. To pre-chop in the dense cataract, I always use a second instrument, nucleus sustainer. There's a micro ball attached on the tip. So I can safely support the nucleus with the second instrument. Carefully, the nucleus sustainer is introduced into the deep posterior pore, deep equator of the nucleus. And providing the counter force, I'll pre-chop the nucleus into two pieces, rotate 90 degrees, insert the sustainer to the deep equatorial portion and pre-chop further into four pieces. With the pony up, please. Got the seat. For the fake homeriscation, I do use burst mode with its pet chip bevel down. always use bevel down towards the nucleus and when the tip is occluded I'd use a small amount of the outer sound NH just for the purpose of clearing the tip with the cornea please show the parameter in this case then the CDE was four point and the aspiration time 32 seconds and then BSS used 16 ml so with a very small amount of BSS and very short aspiration time and also with small amount of the NH I could remove the cataract for the cortex removal I prefer to use this uh, uh, S-shaped IA tip it's in a bowl IA tip the aspiration port is drilled 45 degrees to the shaft So the uh, IA1, please. Could you open the lens, please? Not always. According to the patient eye, I have the uh, 12 precept uh, settings for the fake machine. And according to the pathology of the cataract, and according to the uh, patient uh, uh, eye situation, uh, I choose the most appropriate setting for the patient. <coughs> now, the uh, I prepared the lens. <laughs> this is in a panoptics. 23.5 diopters. Uh, for this patient, uh, this incision size is sub 2, 1.9. Uh, I'll use a D cartridge. 
I'd use a probisc to implant the lens. And there is a small trick. One drop more probisc at the port of the cartridge. This will prevent uh, the adhesion of the uh, haptic and optic. For the delicate optic of the multifocal lens, I don't like to touch the center of the optic. So I designed a special instrument to roll the lens to the cartridge. This is a forceps for rolling the uh, multifocal lens. It's U-shaped. Without touching the delicate center of the lens, I can set the lens to the cartridge. Important point is that the both haptic should be placed on the optic so that the lens is set curling downwards. The other side of the instrument forceps had a lot manipulating rod so I can introduce the lens deep into the cartridge. To implant a uh, 6mm optic, any sort of the acrisoft uh, through sub 2mm incision, I need a uh, counter force to the uh, cartridge nodes. So this is a uh, uh, Royal Unihand injector from Asico. I developed uh, uh, many years ago. This is very useful for counter traction implantation. Uh, the plunger always moves touching on the cartridge floor, it is mandatory that the lens should always set curling downwards. Otherwise, the plunger will go on the optic and the jumping the lens into the uh, chamber. First, uh, the intraocular pressure should be high enough. If the pressure is not high enough, you will fail to implant the lens. So add more probisc to keep high pressure and then I use a nuclear sustainer providing a counter force to the D cartridge. Even the smallest D cartridge, it is not possible to insert the cartridge nodes into the anterior chamber. So just attaching the cartridge port to the incision and the providing the counter force, I can successfully implant the lens through this sub two millimeter incision. I get two priests. Nowadays, I use a lot of the uh, toric lens, especially for the uh, mouth focal lens. Uh, more than 50% of my mouth focal cases has a toric. So the uh, toric lens uh, I don't like the rotation of the lens when I remove the uh, probisc in the anterior chamber. So I have the two IA settings. One is for removal of the cortex and other one is to remove the probisc. Wet the corner please. So at this position I will linearly control the flow rate and vacuum to prevent the rotation of the toric lens. Then uh, at the final stage of the surgery, uh, I'll clean the posterior capsule with the posterior capsule polisher. You, I will attach this to the syringe and I will carefully introduce this cannula under the lens. IA again, please. IA again. IA one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed in a small frag fragment of the nucleus. So I will gently remove the radial cortex, fine fiber of the cortex, because I use a lot of visco to, to protect the cornea and the cerium. Sometime in the soft shell of the biscuit, a small nuclear fragment, 
will be hidden. So the uh, at the end of the surgery, I'll wash out the anterior chamber so that uh, no nuclear fragment is hidden. Then just increasing the intercooler pressure, I will seal, seal the incision. All the instrument I used uh, during this surgery is designed by myself. I have no financial interest. The uh, all instrument is uh, uh, produced by ASICO, American Surgical Instrument Corporation. And uh, this year, ASICO uh, had a booth first time in Brazil. And uh, all the instrument will be available from their booth. Thank you very much for your attention.